So for Christmas last year, I got me an LG OLED Evo C3 42 inch 4K smart TV for my game room setup. Actually, LG sent this to me for purpose of review, but I'm looking at it like it was a Christmas gift because I was actually in the market for a new gaming TV as I recently moved and I have an extra little space to, you know, set up a little game room. So perfect timing, LG. I appreciate it. Now, I do have another LG TV in my living room that I bought a couple years ago, which is also an OLED. It is a bigger TV than this one. Um, it has a lot of the same features, but this newer generation, they have made, you know, some improvements. This one is a mid-sized TV. So while I probably wouldn't put this in my living room, I do think it's perfect for bedrooms, uh, your game room, like what I'm using it for. Maybe even mount it to the wall in your bathroom. I mean, do with it as you please. So this TV is powered by LG's Alpha 9 AI Gen 6 processor, which I'm familiar with uh, this kind of setup. My other TV has an older version of you know their processor that they use in here. Uh, and it's supposed to use AI-assisted deep learning algorithms to analyze the best picture and sound settings for the content you're viewing. Uh, but it also has a lot of presets, customization options for you to fine tune how you want things to look. The TV for movies also has filmmaker mode that's supposed to set up the visuals to how the director intended the movie to look. Myself, I typically like to check out the presets, go from there, making some tweaks to picture settings to see what I think looks good. Um, maybe even go online and, and look up, you know, other people's settings for specific TVs and kind of mess around with it. Uh, but overall, I think everything out of the box looked good to me as far as the presets go. Uh, I didn't use the AI settings for the visuals or the filmmaker mode. I did kind of mess with that stuff and it was fine. Uh, but I did wind up using the AI pro sound setting uh, for this video as I thought it sounded pretty good for internal speakers on a TV. It gives you a virtual 9 to 1 to 1 or 9.1.2 up mix. And I thought it sounded pretty good. Um, normally I would have, you know, external speakers attached to this, but we'll kind of talk about that in a moment. Uh, with this TV being an OLED, it does have pixel cleaning and refreshing options, which I've gotten used to with my other LG OLED. Now, once you go OLED, there's like no going back. So, I mean, I love this stuff. Uh, like I said, I already have an LG TV. So yeah, this thing did impress me. It is going to be something I use daily. Uh, but with this pixel refresh option, um, it, it runs through to remove any image retention, uh, either each time you power the TV off or if you manually select to do it. Now, I recommend when getting a TV like this uh, to go through the motions of getting everything set up for the first time and then take a real close look at the screen. Maybe even go to like a single color full screen video on YouTube, which is what I did, and, and see if you find any issues with pixels from the get go. I had no issues with this LG TV or my other one that I bought a couple years ago, uh, but if you notice any horizontal lines or vertical lines in the screen, typically doing the pixel refresher, maybe a full power cycle, will take care of that usually. Like I said, didn't have an issue with it on this TV, but um, sometimes I think in shipping and these things sitting around, the pixels may need to be refreshed for the first time. Um, you won't have an issue with that. So as far as uh, support here, this uh, gaming TV, it has support for Dolby Vision, HDR10, and Dolby Atmos, which I love. My other LG TV, I have set up with Dolby Atmos speakers, and it's an awesome experience like being in the theater. I may eventually have to do the same with this. Now this TV, it has four HDMI ports. Don't know if I mentioned that earlier. It has eARC for one of them. So you got plenty of uh, you know ports to plug in your consoles and whatever else you need, right? So the TV has auto low latency mode for gaming. Like I said, this TV has got a lot of features for gaming. It's got G-Sync, FreeSync compatible, has variable refresh rate compatibility. It's listed to have a response time of less than 0.1 milliseconds. Um, and then going back to settings, like most LG's recent TVs, this one also has the LG Game Optimizer, which allows you to fine tune your settings for gaming quickly with a bunch of options. And the one thing I like, you know, after having gotten my previous LG TV, is how all the settings and options, uh, there'll be like explanations that can pop up or you could select to read uh, that tell you what they actually do. Kind of helps to not have to go around digging, figuring out what specific things do. So I do like that. Just a little minor thing, but hey, uh, it works. Nice. Now, for my time using this TV, uh, I did watch some movies, played a few games, 
And while this TV is smaller than my other LG OLED, I did notice improvements with picture quality, brightness, the speed of going through things, loading up apps and all that. Uh, my other LG TV, like I said, is maybe a couple years old, and it's still amazing. I wouldn't think of getting rid of it. Um, it works great. But this TV, it's going to be perfect for me for a dedicated gaming setup. The image quality is amazing. The brightness is great, like I said. Nothing really to complain about at all, in my opinion. I know some people don't like using the built-in apps on some smart TVs for like their streaming services, uh, but I found the experience using LG's WebOS on this TV to be perfectly fine. Everything loaded up quick and without issue, so really no complaints for me there, but I don't really see using that stuff too much if I'm going to be mostly using this for gaming, but I did want to check that stuff out because on our other TV, uh, we do have like an Apple TV setup and we use a bunch of different services. So it's been a while since I've used the web OS and I didn't really have an issue there. And they also do like for gamers, you got Nvidia GeForce now as part of the operating system. If you want to do some cloud gaming, you're signed up for that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but overall, yeah, really great image quality. Everything sounded good with the internal speakers, <sighs> very thin profile on this TV. And, you know, with this being a 2023 model, um, it still has all the latest stuff going on for it. But, you know, being a, a it's, it's not old, came out in 2023. Now's the time to be buying a new TV if you're looking for one. I, mean, I ain't pressuring anybody into buying this TV or anything, but I do really like it. And I'm going to be keeping it for my own personal use in gaming and whatnot. But this time of year, and these TVs be getting marked down, man. You got the Super Bowl coming up, all that good stuff right after, I always say, right after the holiday season is really the best time to be looking for a TV. You find a lot of deals out there, and I know this one uh, is on deals out there. They have other sizes as well of the same model if the 42-inch doesn't work for you. But like I said, I think it's perfect for a, a little gaming setup. But yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if you're interested in this TV, I will put a link down below. But as always, when it comes to technology like this, TVs, displays, always do your research. You know, I'm just kind of giving you the basics and my experience using it, and I really liked it, but, you know, these things can be an investment, so watch more videos out there. Uh, look into the specs a little more. Do, do your due diligence, right? But I do appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.